What's going on guys and welcome back to episode number 7 of the Stokesy and Stoner Show. So glad to be here today. We're going to do a crypto market review like we always do and then we're getting into the meat of some really interesting articles over the past 7 days. I personally am going to be covering a huge story that has just broken where a major crypto news site CCN is about to go offline. Incredible stuff. I think I know why, and I think it's got to do with some uh, very interesting background politics happening in the world at the moment. And then I'm going to jump into what it's been like personally to get paid in crypto for the past 18 months. Adam, over to you for what you're covering tonight. Stoner, great to see you again. I'll be talking about the bomb, which is an experimental cryptocurrency. What on earth is going on in India? And then, of course, over to our coin picks. Guys, got an action-packed, jam-packed one for you tonight. Make sure you stick around and let's get into the show. Alright, welcome back guys to the Stokesy and Stoner Show and first up, as always, we take a look at what's been happening in the market during the past week and today it's great, we've got some price action. We've got some green across the board as we know, all cryptos are correlated 70-80% to Bitcoin, so whatever Bitcoin does, the market follows. But we've also had some action from Litecoin and I actually think that Litecoin is carrying the market somewhat in addition to Bitcoin, Bitcoin being the major and Litecoin being the minor. Um, you know, we've got Bitcoin up 2.93%. 2, 2 we've got Litecoin just in the past 24 hours up 10.56%. Overall is positive. We've got the market cap sitting at around $254 billion. Still down from the highs we were seeing about a week or two ago where we were pushing up to 280 billion, if not 290 billion. But my personal take on this is that I'm happy uh, that we're seeing these small pullbacks. I think it's a sign of an organic uh, growth. We don't want things too quick. We don't want things too sudden. So having these small pullbacks and then having things recover uh, in this way, I think is actually an extremely positive sign and makes me more bullish, uh, to be honest, that we're still at the beginning of will, what will likely or hopefully be you know, a six to 12 month strong growth bull market. So overall, I'm very happy. If I was a buying man, I'd probably be dollar cost averaging in uh, at these prices because I think you know, in the short to medium term, we've probably got some range to go. Uh, but look, that's just my opinion. Adam, over to you for what your take is on the market at the moment. Yeah, great market looking at this uh, halvening of Litecoin coming up and it's reflecting at 23.65% over the last seven days. I, I hope that people aren't buying the rumor to sell the news with Litecoin. But ultimately, as Charlie Lee said, Bitcoin is gold and Litecoin is the silver. And as you know, Bo, I, I love mining Litecoin. I just, I, I really get the power of this coin. And I think not just with the halvening coming up of Litecoin uh, in the near future, but overall with daily transactions of Litecoin on top of the Lightning Network and with the cheap running of the script algorithm in the background, there is huge things happening with this. Going down the charts further in the top 10 over the last seven days, we can see it, it's all pretty average except for Litecoin. Look at it pumping up there at 23.65% in seven days. Further down, Monero with this uh, little quiet... Um, privacy coin uh, that was one of my picks a while ago but i see it there sitting at 0.75 percent going against the mainstream of the last seven days overall as you said the market is there's not a lot of movement in it but i will quickly mention bitcoin sv after the big pump it, it went up too high too fast and it went over uh over two hundred dollars and it's currently sitting at 188.38 and as i mentioned before our discussion tonight bo i actually had some Bitcoin SV in a wallet that was the result of a fork from Bitcoin Cash. And I used that to pay a bill over the internet uh, for uh, for some work I'm getting done on my web page. And I simply converted it to Ethereum. And the receiver of that Ethereum was quite grateful to get it in Ethereum because he no longer had to operate in PayPal. And it was his first time transacting in crypto. So when, when people say that there's no use for crypto, well, I'm using I'm using it for for getting real life work done on a real life channel in real life commerce. Yeah, and you know uh, it's it's evident when you're interacting with people uh, in remote 
part of the world. So people may not realize, realize this, but if you want to do business um, internationally, especially as a small business, I mean, it's not hard to get the work done, but the payment, the payment is extremely difficult. And this is why freelancing platforms have grown so popular, but the freelancing plat platforms just gouge a huge chunks. We're talking between five to 20% of the total job cost taking away from the pocket of the person actually doing the work. So when you engage freelancers outside of this kind of platform to do various work, you've got things like PayPal, which gouge when you're going between foreign exchange rates. Uh, you've got things like uh, other kind of uh, platforms like uh, what's the main one? Western Union are extremely expensive. So the alternatives, uh, things like crypto, which is instantaneous, uh, virtually, you can send the other person a link to show them that you've paid. So you have this like proof of uh, authenticity or proof of verification that the payment has been sent. They get it in crypto, they can choose to hold onto it and hopefully get some gains from it, or they can just go and liquidate it on an exchange. So crypto for international business is extremely, extremely useful. Flipping straight into crypto, Adam, you've got one for us tonight. The first thing we're going to talk about, why don't you tell us a little bit about BOMB token? Yeah, check this out. So uh, to start off with, I'm not recommending this coin, but I am recommending we look at it as a fantastic and fascinating social experiment. So here we are looking at the page where it says BOMB is a social experiment and financial case study to measure the feasibility of a deflationary currency. The rules are simple. One, there were originally one million bomb in existence. Two, each time a bomb is transferred, 1% of the transaction is destroyed. Three, there will never be newly minted bombs. So it's quite simple, it's quite fascinating, and this thing is going ballistic. So there's only a million. Every time we transfer between anyone, 1% 1 of it is destroyed. Now, ultimately what will happen over time is you keep transferring. So it's Stay with me as a thought experiment, Bo. You keep transferring this thing, and eventually there will be one bomb left, and you won't be able to move that bomb eventually because it will keep declining by a percent. And in fact, in theory, it will always get smaller and smaller and smaller until kid, until it would be questionable if we could take 1% of a fee of transferring that bomb. So on the markets, this thing has gone insano. It's gone insano because... There's nothing like it. They did an airdrop and you can also buy it. So there's two ways to get this coin. One, you can work through this site to try and get some free bomb or you can buy it straight away. But in any case, Bo, I have never seen a coin like this and the crypto community has never seen a coin like this. Would you buy any of this? I'm just having a look at it now. I'm actually on the charts and I'm looking at... Um... So it was basically listed or it started showing price in late May. At the time, it came on the markets at 57 cents. Here we are in June, just a couple of months, and it's at $9.30. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. Um, look, this is look extremely... Look at that chart, up, up and away. I mean, it's... Ex so I, I imagine, Adam, bomb must not be divisible. So you, do you have to send one, one bomb at a time? Don't know. I, well, I think if it's like a cryptocurrency, shouldn't it be divisible by 100 million parts like Bitcoin? Well, some, uh, some are, not all of them are. Right. So, well, great question. And, and probably uh, it's probably going to, because it is just a social experiment, and there's a, you can see if you're looking at the chart now, a total supply of 973,000. So the difference between inflation and deflation, as we know, is that inflation is essentially bad because the... The longer you hold your money, the less value, valuable it becomes. Whereas deflation is arguably good on the ter on the surface because the longer you hold your money, the more valuable it be becomes. Now, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, not all cryptocurrencies, because some cryptocurrencies have an unlimited supply, Tether, for example, and arguably even Ether, where they can create more Ether. But Bitcoin is a deflationary supply, a deflationary currency because there's only 21 million. They've confirmed they've lost about 4 million, which means there's only 17 million. And although we don't have an algorithm that destroys Bitcoin every time we transact it, the reality is, is that people still do lose Bitcoin. They lose it through losing 
uh, keys to their wallet, destroying what they've uh, put it on a hard drive, perhaps printing it on paper and that paper being compromised. But in any case, Bitcoin's supply is in fact shrinking. Although we do mine more out of the ground, sorry, out of the algorithm, we we are actually losing Bitcoin, and that's evident after you know four million being lost, and over the future possibly more will be lost. But Bomb, Bomb amplifies this whole experiment, and Bomb's not. Uh, pretending to be something it's not it says it straight up in its first sentence look at that web page page bomb is a social experiment and financial case study to measure the feasibility of a deflationary currency so Bo, i raise this with you and the viewers because this is a really fast paced and exciting way to see what will happen as a coin deflates and becomes so rare what will the people do with it and if it is as you said, you can't devise it, uh, can't be divided anymore. What happens when we get to that one last bomb, and we can't move it around? I don't know. I think it's great. What do you reckon? Look, if people are using it, I'm just over at the moment looking at the contract. So it's an ERC20 token. Um, I'm over on Etherscan, and it's had 22,267 transfers uh, since the contract went live, which is a fair, quite a few. Um, Looking at the holders, we've got, uh, it's quite distributed actually. <clears throat> so we've got um, uh, Mercatox, which is the exchange, is currently holding 113,967 tokens, so a fair, a fair chunk. Uh, we've got another Jess holding 116,000, that's unidentified. We've got Parjar holding uh, 8,447, but then the remainder are pretty well. Uh, we've got here one uh, Ether Delta 2 is holding a thousand. It's pretty well distributed. So essentially 44.39% uh, is held by other accounts. And we've got <clears throat> a few accounts hold uh, significant amounts. But I believe, I'm thinking that they are probably uh, exchanges. It actually, there's a metric here. Total token holders are 2,875. So there's not a whole lot of people that are holding these. Now, would I buy it? What I find interesting is that whether this is an experiment uh, or not, well, it is an experiment. People are buying it and people are trading this. And I mean, we're talking really the start of, of a potentially a bull market, but we're not we're not ripping like we were in late 2017. And we've had a meteoric rise in just like literally a couple of months. This has gone from 74 cents uh, up to you know nine dollars. That's what a bit over 10x, so like 13 or 14x. Would I buy it? Yeah, I would actually. Just because of what I'm seeing, I'm seeing people using it. I'm seeing volume. It's only traded on two exchanges, which does worry me a little bit. It's only on Mercatox, mm. which is less a less than savory exchange. Um, I'll look at that bomb ROI, fifteen hundred percent. So I got very close there. With yeah, one thousand five hundred and twenty-eight <laughs> percent in just a few months, with an all-time high of around twelve dollars. Mate, I'm I'm just going to get one just just for fun, you know, just because just one. Um, yeah, why not? It's ten bucks. I'd drop a hundred. I'd drop a hundred bucks on it, but see what happens. Yeah, see what happens. And it, as you said, it's only on two exchanges, but uh, with those, it, it's different to. And I was actually going to give a link to to uh, Bitcoin two, which is uh, a, a really bad case of pump and dump. Can you bring it up there on on your screen? If it, I think the code is BTC two. Oh, BTC two. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So th this would this is different to bomb. So bo Bitcoin two. Uh, is a is a pure pump and dump dump and bad news because essentially we've seen it before. Wow. Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Diamond, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin. In fact, in my opinion, anything that starts with Bit that's not Bitcoin ends up being bad. That could be BitConnect, uh, Bitfinex, to an extent Bitmain. <laughs> uh, I, might prove me wrong it's just a chance coincidence correlation causation it doesn't matter the end state is unless it's bitcoin if it ends if it starts with bit typically not always but typically it ends up being bad now bitcoin too was a classic pump and dump that is where you get people who don't understand bitcoin and if you look at the there's a, a bitcoin two web page and that basically is, is quite a poorly written web page. It basically just says Bitcoin 2 is better than Bitcoin because it's version 2, which is arguably what Bitcoin Cash was. And people who weren't familiar with how crypto works are like, well, this is going to be better. And the chart shows that it just went straight up. Whoever got in early dumped it and it came pouring down. Whereas BOM is not pretending to be something it is not. And yeah, I'm going to 
buy at least one and just see what happens. And I'm see fascinated that. to see whether I lose or gain on that ten dollar investment. I, I just reckon it's a great experiment. And what we might find is because the the creators are honest uh, about it being a social experiment, and they're really just seeing what can happen. What you might find is some bigger players might actually get behind this as it starts to gain gain traction and it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy where it'll start growing more and more as more people learn about it, get involved, and you may even have some other exchanges just list it uh, to be a part of the experiment to actually see what happens and, you know, to get a little bit of trading fees on people buying and selling it as well. But, uh, you know, they might um, they might choose to list this thing. It's an ARC20 token, so it's not from a technology perspective. It's, it's done and dusted. That's easy. Uh, yeah, interesting. I mean, if the if the founders are anonymous, um, that that might be a bit tough. Oh, here we go. Look, bomb squad. There you go. There's the founders. Yeah, look, very interesting, man. I'm glad he brought it to our attention. I think it's uh, fascinating to see where this where this bomb token actually goes. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bomb. I really like the name as well and everything around it. But once it goes parabolic, I think it it, it could be out of control. And speaking of control, tell us about what's happening over at CCN there. Yeah, look, this is huge, Adam. Uh, we've got an article here from Cointelegraph. We're going to dig right into this. Top crypto media site CCN shuts down, cites Google update for loss of search visibility. Top cryptocurrency media site CCN is shutting down today, June 10th, according to an announcement on their website. The post written by Jonas uh, borch Grevink, director and founder of CCN Markets and Hawkfish AS, states that the reason behind the closure is a large drop in traffic from Google searches following a June 3rd Google Core update. Uh, Jonas writes that the crypto news site's traffic fell over 71% on mobile overnight. So coming over here to the actual announcement on CCN itself, I'm just reading through the first few paragraphs here. Google's June 2019 Core update rolled out on June the 3rd, 2019, and CCN's traffic from Google searches dropped more than 71% on mobile overnight. As data from SEO analyzer Systrix shows, our visibility on Google dropped from 1.2 to less than 0.6. You might, uh, you might say we ought not to face any issues since we've been at those levels and lower in the past. What you need to realize is that we have added more people to the team, both full-timers and part-timers. We do not want to downsize the team. We do not want to break the morale of the team. So yes, this change by Google is directly uh, having a significant impact on us as a small independent news organization that has never received any outside funding. The money we uh, made on advertisements was directly funneled back into the growing, uh, into growing the team. And they've got here, our daily revenue is down more than 90%. So I think there's a number of things to pick apart with this one. And, you know, to, to me, it's quite astounding that um, it's only taken eight days of lower traffic for them to literally call quits. I think there's a lot more to this than what they're writing here. No business has only got eight days worth of operational revenue, especially one as big as CCN. They could probably fund themselves for six months, if not 12 months with literally no revenue if they've managed their treasury well. But regardless, eight days, eight days, and you're shutting the whole business down? I mean, come on. You're not fooling anyone. And, there is a, and a massive business as well. It's and a not massive like... business. There is a lot yeah. more to these guys than meets the eye. And what I speculate this is a part of is a part of a wider crackdown on major tech giants such as Google, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, cracking down on um, a political free speech. Now, CCN may have at one point been uh, a, a moderate news outlet that... Uh, you know, covered cryptocurrencies, but some of the stuff I've seen lately from CCN made it look straight out of Orwell's 1984, where it was just a political propaganda mouthpiece for the left. That is the honest truth. I saw some articles here where it made me think, is this BuzzFeed or is this a crypto news site? But that is the honest truth. Is this Huffington Post or is this a news site? Is this the Wall Street Journal? So what I think has happened is these guys have been flagged uh, as part of a greater crackdown from the Trump administration on political censorship of free speech and conservative voices, and they have been penalized or punished in some way for uh, what they've been doing. That That is my speculation, and I've put out on Twitter recently to watch certain tech companies because there's, guys, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't know uh, in relation to major tech companies, um, their political influencing of certain campaigns, and essentially what, like, without going into it in too much detail, I think you're going to see far 
bigger things happen in the near future with some of these platforms. You might see major companies uh, shut down that you never thought were possible. You may see uh, huge changes rolling out. But overall, what I, what I see is that CCN um, is essentially reaping reaping what they sowed, <laughs> uh, in, in yeah. a sense. And, uh, you know, it's just in- incredibly fascinating to me. Adam, what's your take on it? Mate, I'm, I'm glad you raised the article because the reality is whether you're on the left or right side of politics, you should be concerned by anyone manipulating or filtering the truth. So in, in my opinion, when people are too far to left or right, and they say, well, this is the only information we want to have put out there. They're dangerous. And it doesn't matter what side you're on. Because what's important is the truth. And what's important is freedom of speech, freedom of information, and the passage of information. Now, if we allow anyone to censor search engines or filter the information that comes out, you simply have to ask the question, what stops them from censoring everything and more importantly if they start to get this momentum what's going to stop the people understanding the truth and if people don't know the truth how can they make informed decisions and if they can't make informed decisions how can we do what's what's right and what's good and the reality is it's all linked and part of the reason why I love Bitcoin Bitcoin and crypto is not because of the catchphrase of decentralized but because of the reality of the truth in the markets now as we spoke about bomb what was interesting about the bomb is that the truth is in the markets and we'll see what happens and if it happens it happens and what we see in democracy hopefully is that the truth is in the voting now with the demise of ccn if they have been manipulating the information that's going out there in the search engines then then suck it. Well done. I'm glad you've collapsed because ultimately good has triumphed over evil. Now, the question is, Bo, do do you think that CCN, besides the political influence, how do you think that has linked to money and possibly crypto? Uh, In terms of what, sorry? Well, if CCN can manipulate what the people are seeing and thinking, could that manipulate the way people spend and invest their money? And perhaps the FOMO of crypto itself. Because as we know, a lot of governments hate or allege to hate uh, Bitcoin, which we'll get into the next article in a second. So how do you think a centralized media or body of of individuals could affect Bitcoin and fiat? Oh, yeah. Thanks thanks for clarifying that, Um, Adam. Yeah, mate. Look, absolutely. I mean, what, what we've seen in... 2019 2018 is finding finding a publication or a trusted source of information is a dime in a dozen and the ones that you do find come under horrendous attacks constantly from the mainstream media the ones that are actually pushing truth that are that are not being politically correct and are just putting out their information for people to digest themselves now, regarding the effect, essentially propaganda can have on fiat. Well, look, the the traditional uh, system that we have at the moment, the the Keynesian money system that we currently have, the the banks control the world. The banks own the world. When you have access to the printing press, you can buy anything, right? Once you buy media, what can you do? You can do anything. Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. I mean, these these major rich guys, they go and buy their own media companies and then they can spread whatever message they want. Hardly, there are very few wealth, super wealthy, successful financiers. And when I say financiers, that's a general term, I think, for people, for Wall Street executives, right? Very few want Bitcoin to succeed. Why? Because it will literally turn the system on its head. It takes wealth at the top and it transfers it to the bottom. And the people at the bottom go to the top. That's that's what Bitcoin is doing. That's what Bitcoin will do with this system to the point where if we see continual appreciation of Bitcoin, you might have people that 
just decided to buy Bitcoin back in 2010, 20, uh, 2009, 2011, have so much money that they can buy banks. Like, this is a reality. These people could buy banks, could buy entire financial institutions. So what we're seeing is the wealth, the wealth is transferring. So, I mean, yeah, you've just got to be like so discerning. So yeah, and discerning. as Andreas, the godfather, in my opinion, would say, you wouldn't buy the bank, you would be the bank. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even need to buy it and and it's right. And I think in, in this day and age, because it's somehow amazing how we can regress, instead of being politi- politically correct, we need to be politically direct. And we can see some leadership in the world that is not being politically correct. They're being politically direct. And the difference, in my opinion, is speaking to the people like children and we want to protect their feelings as opposed to speaking to them like intellectual adults who need to hear the truth so they can make informed decisions. Which leads me on to what's happening in India, Bo. Have you... I I want to bring up this article from the Reserve Bank of India. Now, India is important in the crypto space because... First of all, they've got a huge population. It's about, I think, a fifth of the world, a fifth or sixth of the world's population, over a billion people. And second of all, they're they're quite innovative. A lot of the work I've had done on IT projects have I've gone directly to India. They're highly capable people, highly intelligent, and highly tech savvy. Now, a while ago, Bo, you released a video uh, about the RBI and it banning crypto. And if you do any Google search, there are hundreds of uh, stories about the Reserve Bank of India, the RBI, banning crypto. Well, this just out from Coindesk uh, on June 7, 2019. It says, the Reserve Bank of India is denying any acknowledge of a proposed ban on cryptocurrencies, despite reports that a number of governmental agencies have backed a draft legislation according to a right to information request filed on June 4. Varun Sethi, a lawyer specializing in blockchain, blockchain, filed the inquiry into the RBI's involvement with banning cryptocurrencies and regulation of official digital currencies bill 2019. What a name for a bill, by the way. What a mouthful. Draft, following a report from the Economic Times, the legislation would ban the sale purchase and issuance of all types of cryptocurrencies bank officials said that the rbi rbi was not in communication with governmental agencies during the legislative process and had not received a copy of the bill the bank forward forwarded several of seti's questions to the department of economic affairs as well as the ministry of finance including what are official digital currencies as per the rbi now bo i'm putting it out here no one, except for the uh, Indian government themselves, actually knows what on earth is going on with cryptocurrencies. Now, it relates to what we were just speaking about. On one hand, if you keep control through either the control of information or the control of money or the control of influencing, in either case, it, it keeps power in this centralized point at the top. If we invert that power and give it to the people, those at the top suddenly lose all their power. And of course, if we decentralize banks, all of that power diminishes straight away. So herein lies the conundrum for India and and all nations, in my opinion. If they let go of their reserve banking system and adopt crypto, they, they dissolve their power to simply print as much money as they want and control anything money is power let's face it concurrently if they push back on crypto they send it underground and they allow other nations to advance on this technology a technology that cannot be stopped will not be stopped has never been stopped and there's nothing that anyone can do to try and ban it so there is a list of countries a lot of countries that have said we officially ban cryptocurrency and this in fact extends to russia because not bringing up an an article on Russia, but the same thing has happened in Russia. On one hand, I'm getting information saying Russia's clamping down on cryptocurrencies and they're going to ban it. And on the other hand, we see Putin is going to adopt his own cryptocurrency. 
So last week we spoke about the the spectrum of decentralization. So at one end you have Bitcoin, completely decentralized, and on the other end you have Tether, completely centralized, both on the blockchain, both a cryptocurrency. And as we know, we can see that if if banks, uh, central banks, adopt a completely decentralized platform, then they lose all their power. But if they adopt a centralized platform, people like you and I will not choose to use that one. So you did a long and great article or video on this. What are your thoughts on the RBI banning or allowing, allowing cryptocurrencies in their economy? Well, they're scared of it, to put it simple. They're yep. scared, scared shotless of cryptocurrency and it's because uh, the Indian government and the RBI have essentially, uh, you know, are in the process of sending um, the rupee to zero. Uh, they've hyperinflated it over a period of like 10 to 20 years. Uh, they they decided to remove 501,000 rupee notes overnight, mm. uh, forcing Indians to go and get a bank account queue up at banks so they could exchange their notes uh, for the higher denominated new technology plastic notes. Uh, many There were many agendas behind that overnight ri ridiculous, uh, you know, thing that they did. So, you know, the RBI has had strict control over Indians. And the thing about in India is, uh, like you said, you, they have a huge population, um, a diverse population in terms of being geographically spread and also in terms of of uh, those who are in poverty and those who are economically well off. But one thing that most of them do have is internet access and now mobile phones. So here we have a, a decentralized uh, structure in place to facilitate a decentralized money. So when you have a country with these kind of conditions, something like Bitcoin makes so much sense. And what we're seeing in Venezuela, what we're seeing in Iran, in Chile, in Argentina, uh, in Colombia, is a flight to Bitcoin as a natural evolution of societies move to hard money when their own currencies and economies start going to zero. So what I've seen from the RBI is they are massively threatened, they are hugely scared, and they are running for the hills and probably don't know what they're going to do with Bitcoin because it's creeping up on them and they're going to have to make a decision about it soon. And and if they don't make a decision, the people will make it for them. Correct. Because it, Bitcoin waits for no one. It doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care. It just does its thing. And ultimately, the truth is in the markets. And if the markets choose to take Bitcoin over the rupee, well, then they'll take it. And it's funny you mentioned about the how they took the, the, the high currency notes off the market. In South Korea, as an example, uh, they they went the other way. This is a few years ago. So when I lived in Korea, the highest denomination was Manon, which is 10 bucks, 10,001. Uh, and just before I left, they introduced the Oh Manon, which is 50,000. So initially, they the biggest denomination was $10. And I remember when I was there, people would be walking around with these piles of cash. Now, because Korea is quite a rich country and people were getting sick of carrying these big wads of cash, they actually made a bigger denomination, which was their Omanon, which is the 50,000 won. And conversely, with someone like South Korea and Japan as well, these these countries are highly innovative and I, I think will leave the crypto, lead the crypto space. Now, Bo, You've got a good relationship with Japan, as in you like going snowboarding there and you hang out in Japan a fair bit. What have they been doing with their currencies? Do they Are they cutting away their big notes or increasing their big notes? Well, we do have big notes in Japan. You've got 100-year notes, yeah. you've got 1,000-year notes, you've got 5,000-year notes. And it's ridiculous because as soon as you get to these countries, you see these denominations, you go, oh, okay, they've overinflated their currency. It is an immediate sign of poor economic policy. Well, when I say that, it's, you know, the, uh, the Keynesian system works under the assumption that the uh, central banks know better than the free market, right? So I guess, you know, that's their whole philosophies. But, you know, you have these huge notes and then you they carry around all these coins. They've got one yen coins. One, They've still got one yen coins, but you've got a thousand yen note. Now, a thousand yen note is like 10 bucks. Actually, sorry. Uh, yeah, th yeah, a thousand yen note is about 10 bucks. You carry around these one yen coin. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, the the... What Bitcoin can do for these countries, and I might add actually talking about India um, 
something came to me is Bitcoin is really putting these central banks and governments on the back foot massively. Like here we have this decentralized currency that is growing and growing and growing. And they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like this, this the pressure Bitcoin is putting on these countries, uh, especially with volatility coming from the United States, not in terms of economic, but in terms of global policy, they may be looking to offload the US dollar. I mean, what alternatives they got at the moment? They've got gold. Um, but, you know, we just saw, I just covered an article yesterday where Venezuela uh, requested $1.2 billion of dollars from uh, mm. the Bank of England. The Bank of England said, no, <laughs> you can't have your own gold. So, like, yep. what, what Bitcoin can provide nation states sovereignty over their own assets as well, and that's sovereignty of the people's assets, you know, because ultimately those assets belong to the people. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's fascinating times we live in. That is a key point, and I'm glad you raised it. First of all, your video was great. Now, we talk about Bitcoin empowering the individual, but that is a fantastic example of where Bitcoin empowers a nation. So when England or one country says to another country, no, we've decided that we are not going to give you back your gold. Well, what are you going to do? You can't go storming into the country, kick down doors and take the gold. You've lost it. And you've seen that happen with other, with other nations. Bitcoin, you can't stop it. You can't say, we've decided we don't like your economic policy, so we're not going to give you your Bitcoin. Well, you don't hold my Bitcoin, whether I'm an individual, a corporation, or a nation. You don't hold it. My keys, my coins. I've just got a quick list of countries where Bitcoin is banned, just for your, uh, just for our viewers' interest. We've got Afghanistan, Pakistan, Algeria, Bolivia, Bangladesh, the Republic of Mas Macedonia, Saudi Arabia, Vanuatu and Vietnam. Now, this list is always moving, but just as a side note, with the Bitcoin time traveler, which I find a fascinating um, story, the Bitcoin time traveler said that in the future, the two biggest holders of Bitcoin will in fact be North Korea and Saudi Arabia. And um, I'm not saying I believe in that Bitcoin time traveler, but just as a thought experiment, isn't it ironic that a country that, according to the time traveler, could be the biggest holder of Bitcoin is in fact having it banned. Now, just because their government says that the people can't hold it does not mean for a second that the government isn't buying it. Think about it. If you've got that much money, you know, a global amount of money, what what does it mean to you to drop a few million dollars into some Bitcoin? Countries should invest and take a calculated risks in many asset class, whether it's oil, gold, tin, copper, aluminium, labor, uh, anything. What? How big a risk is it to any country to drop a few million dollars in the background to buy some Bitcoin? And once you start adding up the entire global economy of individuals and corporations and nations, as in government states, once they all start dropping a few million dollars into Bitcoin, just as a safe, you know, just in case, you'll see that this demand, as we've seen con uh, continually happened sort of slowly over the last 10 years. But in my opinion, this thing is just going to go insano in the future. Well, think about it this way, right? We All it's going to take is one country will set the domino off because most countries are governed by the World Bank uh, uh, or the IMF, International Monetary Fund. So, you know, when one central bank uh, endorses Bitcoin through purchasing it, the World Bank and the IMF also endorses it and the dominoes will start to fall and they won't do it until they have sign off from the world bank or the imf uh but it will happen at some point and just think about this as a potential scenario for people that might be thinking it's crazy for uh, a government to buy bitcoin think about this for a, for a potential scenario in the future government decides to buy bitcoin they allocate their some of the bitcoin they bought uh let's say to one lot of financial year spending let's just say on roads and maritime they publicize, and whether they whether they want to publicize or not, the people will be requesting this. They publicize the wallet addresses for those funds, and the whole public has transparency and visibility into exactly where that money is going and what it is doing. Total, total accountability. No way of getting around it. These are the kind of like seriously incredible things that you watch in the future will come to pass and it's what bitcoin incredibly provides us but mate look we could talk about this all night i better move on to the next article so we don't ramble on for too long employees can now pay salaries in ether via crypto startup bitwage now people that follow my channel will know that i did cover an article recently on crypto payments and i thought 
rather than kind of rehash uh, what this is all about, I thought about just giving some personal experiences on what it's been like getting paid in crypto for work. So I've had a consultancy. Uh, I've also had the crypto media business, Cryptocurrency Australia Media. So I've been paid in crypto for a ton of different jobs for nearly two years now, for about 18 months. And it's been... Um, I would say my experience has been 50-50, and that is because a lot of what I got paid was uh, at the kind of the, the start of the bear market, and what I didn't liquidate, I got really hurt on, really, really hurt on. So essentially what I didn't do is I didn't, I didn't, manage, um, I didn't manage the funds as well as I should have. I took on too much risk, but now as we're coming into a uh, 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 bull market, and I've continually been getting paid, it's been fantastic. So some jobs you get paid, you will um, you will peg the amount of dollars to crypto. You may opt for Ether, you may opt for Bitcoin, or the uh, the vendor may only want to pay in Bitcoin or may only want to pay in Ether. That's fine. There's merchants out there that you can use like CoinPayments.net that allow you to create a free account, and you can actually create um, an invoice. You can create a link pegged to whatever currency you want to get paid in that certain amount. So when the per so let's just say you, you want to get paid five hundred dollars in Australian dollars, you just go and produce this merchant link, it's essentially a point of sale, you send it to the person, then when they go to pay you, it calculates how much Ether or Bitcoin at the current market rate you need to get paid at the time that they click it, and then that'll that rate will be fixed for like uh, you know maybe ten minutes to allow the payment to go through. They're the best systems we use. So in terms of systems, um, it was also tricky because you're using things like uh, coin payments, tax perspective as well, lots of record keeping. Uh, that's been quite difficult, but getting paid, personally paid in crypto and then having it go up, you know, a certain amount of percentage. So let's just say I liquidated 50% and I put the other 50% in a, in a savings account or a treasury. Having it go up in value and then selling it has been amazing. It's been amazing. And whatever I can take in Bitcoin and keep, I just keep it. So what it actually does is it changes your psych, your psychology of spending. What it does is it lowers your time preference. Time preference is is a is a, a term used in Austrian economics where a person assigns a certain time outlook based on their strategic decisions in life. So what that means is applying that to Bitcoin. If I'm going to get paid in Bitcoin and I see Bitcoin as a hard money that's going to appreciate long term in in life, I want to do the most things possible to save, to stay safe, to keep my family out of harm, because I want my wealth to appreciate long term so I can afford better things in 10 or 20 years time and I can take better care of my family. What that does with an individual is it changes the way you interact with your environment and with other people. It lowers your time preference. And in today's world where money is easy, we've got things like Afterpay, we've got things like credit cards, we've got these ways where people can really easily spend money in debt by drawing credit. You know, Bitcoin is the complete opposite. You, you've got to be, you've got to be thick skinned, you've got to be patient, you've got to be resilient. And what this does over the long term is it encourages a low time preference. So that's one of the major things I've found in my life experience with Bitcoin. And uh, as tough as some of the times have been, overall, it's been a huge positive and I've loved every single minute of it. I think if you could hedge your pay, I, I enjoyed that video. And, you know, if, if, some, if the government or an employer said to its staff at the moment, Hey guys, do you want to take fifty percent in crypto and fifty percent in fiat currency? Well, straight away, especially if the public service was paying all their people in cryptos, that would have a huge effect on inflation because there would be less fiat just being pumped into the economy. So that could actually slow inflation. But if I could hedge my bets and go fifty-fifty in wages, I'd do it. I'd take it. And you raise it a really good point when. When we're buying stuff on Afterpay or credit card, money is cheap and kind of invisible. But when I've got a Bitcoin, so at the beginning of this video, we spoke about I paid someone in Ethereum. Now, the only reason why I was reluctant to pay them in Ethereum, because I thought, oh, Ethereum's a bit low at the moment. If I held this Ethereum for a bit longer, it could be worth a lot more a lot later. Now, many will say, no, you have to spend this money to make it to work and that's where that guy spent what was it ten thousand dollars ten thousand 
bitcoins on two pizzas and you know that's classic but when they speak to the guy and say you know do you regret spending all this money on pizza he's like no because that's what bitcoin is worth at the time and that stimulated the crypto economy and all of us are quite grateful that he did it on the outside it's like oh you're an idiot for spending all that money on bit on pizza but no at the time that's what it was worth and that helped the economy but or sorry the crypto economy i should say but you may uh, be aware bo bitcoin being used in financial systems has been taken so seriously that uh, microsoft excel has added the bitcoin logo and uh, a divisible number of 100 million satoshis into excel spreadsheets so in in pure accounting terms even the big players are accepting that whether we take it as an individual wage as an economy of scale or an economy economic tool to transfer between nations tools such as excel itself has accepted bitcoin as part of its as part of its program did you see that added to excel a while ago yeah i did and i think it's awesome you've also got companies like apple have added uh have added bitcoin to the keyboard i believe too oh that's right yes i did hear yeah i I actually use it chucking a quick bit of sauna talk when people say bitcoin will never be accepted it's like well why is it in excel you know why we don't see um frequent flyer points added into excel we don't see amway money if there's such a thing added into excel you know and they've been around longer than bitcoin has Mm. so why is bitcoin now in excel and others aren't but yeah if i had the choice and someone said i will pay you in bitcoin i'd hedge my bets and i'd take it i'd say yeah so even on CoinSpot at the moment, you and I um, are good enthusiasts of CoinSpot. And if we get payouts for uh, affiliation links, as we spoke about in episode one, actually pre-episode one, when I first interviewed you, uh, when we first met, they they pay us now in and always have paid us in fiat currency for any affiliate bonuses that we get from that. It's only a small amount. But if they offered me and said, hey, do you want to take this in Bitcoin? I'd take it in a second. I'd be like, yeah, for sure. But they don't. They pay me in fiat. But hey, money is money at this stage. I'm not going to discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to find is over time, pe- people may think that this is a fallacy or, or, or that, that this is ridiculous that people would want to get paid in, in Bitcoin and it's not going to go anywhere. Mark my words, the demand in the future as Bitcoin appreciates, the demand will become so great on certain companies that they will be pressured into offering it for uh for their employees. They may start offering a salary sacrifice uh, option or they may just start saying we offer 5% or 10%. Mark my words, the demand will come from employees who want to get paid in Bitcoin. These companies have got the avenue to hedge their risks on Bitcoin volatility with uh, leveraged products like LedgerX. So there are facilities out there for them to hedge their bets on volatility and anyway, Fiat currencies are highly volatile to begin with, and multinationals have to yeah. deal in a, a, a multitude of different currencies around the world, and they probably just write uh, any losses off in tax anyway. So, you know, I don't think it's too far out of the realm of reality. You, you're dead right, and people like Andreas Antonopoulos, he will, he will actually not, he says this quite often, he will not accept any more when he's uh, paid to speak at public conferences. It's a really good example, in fact, where you said that, that the market will start to employees will actually start to demand i want bitcoin or i'm not turning up and the example it's already happened andreas demands and rightfully so to be paid in crypto otherwise he's not turning up because he doesn't want to deal with swifts and transfers and western union union losing this money when i can literally sit, sit right next to you and go here you go bo blip and wait up to 10 minutes Light, done. lightning network three seconds boom done there you go <laughs> Why would I bother anything else? Uh, we solved the world's problems here. Let's move on to our context, my friend. Let's do it, man. So taking a look at last week, I'm pretty confident the bit to mention this one. I've, I've forgotten every single other past week. <laughs> no, I literally have <laughs> forgotten. But last week I said Litecoin and it's done 24.25% over the past seven days. I'm stoked. Adam, you went Skycoin? I went Sky, yeah. My thing's just gone down. What's it happened? I think Let's it's still in the green look. though. I'm just about to have a look. I've just typed it in. Yeah. I don't have it over seven days, but I'll bring up the price chart real quickly, and we'll see. We'll see what it did. So I certainly know what 
pickers for the week ahead. So we've had a fair bit of red, uh, low red in the markets. You've done exceptionally well looking at... Um, it's only just down slightly, very slightly. The last seven days, you've got 25% up. And over the last seven days, damn it, I'm down 0.36%. Well, look, it probably averages out because you've been up a couple of weeks. I've been down a couple of weeks. So we're probably probably about pretty yeah, even. I think we are. We should have kept it. I don't want to get into competition with it though in case. <laughs> but overall, yeah, if we look at it as a... I think I got the first three and you've got the second three. So viewers, if you hedged your bets on both of us, although we're not giving financial advice, we're Definitely just speaking not. loud, uh, you probably would have broken even. And if you just flip the coin... In the end, you you could, you've, could have come out quite well. All right, coin picks for the week ahead. What's yours? I already Ooh, know mine. Look, uh, I'll throw it over to you. I'll come in on the back end of you after I do uh, All right, well, the charts. I, I was actually thinking in this at, at two levels. I thought, well, maybe we should do a coin pick for the top 10 because it's with the top 10, it's, it's kind of you can look at this stable thing. So in the top 10, my pick would be Bitcoin uh, and possibly uh, possibly Binance, but it's just had such a long run you up. Can only have so one. Long. You can only have one. Okay, then I'm only picking one. All right, and my my pick then is is bomb. I'm going for it, man. Are you going I'm for the going, bomb, man? I'm going for the bomb. I'm going high risk, high return, baby. Uh, currently sitting right now at nine dollars oh, thirty seven. Nine dollars thirty seven. So that, that's my pick for the week ahead because I I just think this is such a funny and fantastic experiment. Uh, I want to see what happens. Why not? Why not? Well, look, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it a bit safer, a bit more conservative as I generally do, and uh, probably stick in, in the top top coins. You know, I was going to go, I believe I was going to go Neo, or I mentioned Neo last week because it had some action, but I'm going to, I'm not going to go Neo this time. I, I actually think I'm going to stick with, um, to be honest, I, I'm going to stick with, with Litecoin. I'm going to stick with Litecoin again because as we draw closer to the halvening, which I don't know how far away that is, probably not too long, probably just a month or two away now. Uh, I, look, I, to be honest, I think we could start to see even still some more price action. So look, that's my pick for the week. We'll see what happens, man. I Just out of curiosity, what do you reckon Litecoin could hit? Well, look, what did it hit last time? It hit two, $300 yeah, in the last it, full market? As I said, it's like 0.2% of what Bitcoin went up to, something like that. So... So Bitcoin went up $25,000 Australian. Look, if the market rallies towards the end of the year, if we get over 500 billion market cap, we pass the halvening, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities to see Litecoin back at $300, $400. Do you think not as a market cap, but as an individual price, it could overtake Ethereum? No. No? No. Ethereum has too big of a network effect. There's too many decentralized applications built on it. That's essentially what's holding it up. Ethereum uh, will remain a market leader for a long, for, uh, well, second to Bitcoin, I think, for a long time yet. Cool. All right. Well, it's been quite a good episode. I always enjoy talking to you. Um, hopefully, our sound has been resolved. Uh, I, again, extend my apologies to both viewers, uh, as in on both channel and my channel. I can assure you, <laughs> Bo and I have worked tirelessly to sort this sound and if you ever get into the media industry which we aren't really but it's just something we do on the side I want to put it out there I have great respect for sound engineers and now I understand entirely when you see people on movie sets with those booms and those little boxes on the side where they're checking everything with the headphones respect this thing has nearly killed us <laughs> but hopefully we sound a lot better now yeah, look, uh, yeah, same here, guys. Sorry, you know, I've had a terrible track record with sound. Uh, it's something I never really gave that much attention to, but then I, I learned that it's actually the number one thing you should give attention to. Took a long time, but I think we're nailing it. It seems crispy to me tonight, so hopefully it's good for you guys. Look, guys, just want to say thank you for watching. Um, as always, really appreciate your time. Don't forget to give us a like. That helps give us some visibility and helps our small show grow and get in the eyes, uh, get in front of more people. If you haven't subscribed uh, to my channel make sure you do make sure to go on my channel make sure to go to the description check out uh, Adam's channel and subscribe while you're there Adam's got tons of really good content and more and more coming that's it from me thank you guys Adam over to you before we close it out thank you you're all very welcome to come to my channel I focus heavily on relying on replying to your comments also don't forget to check out Bo's courses Guys, some of his content, you focus on what he can do, you could make some serious returns. Currently, Bitcoin's sitting at 
$7,917 on today, the 11th of June, 2019. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. We'll talk to you next time. Peace out, guys.